In this video, we're going to focus on graphing quadratic functions, how to graph it in vertex form, standard form, how to find the maximum and the minimum values. We're going to talk about how to find the axis of symmetry, the vertex, and also how to write the equation. And then we're going to work on a board problem dealing with uh, how to find the maximum height, the time it takes to get there, the range of the object, and how long it takes before it hits the ground. So let's begin. First, you need to know the difference between the shapes positive x squared and negative x squared. Positive x squared is a parabola that opens in the upward direction. Because it opens in the upward direction, it has a minimum value. The minimum value occurs at the vertex. In this problem, the vertex is the origin, 0, 0. The x-coordinate of the vertex is the axis of symmetry. I'm going to write AOS. And it's an equation. It's simply the x value of the vertex. So you write it as x equals 0. The y value of the vertex is the minimum value. Now for the graph y equals negative x squared, it opens in a downward direction. And so it has a maximum value at the vertex. So now let's work on some examples. You need to be familiar with vertex form and standard form. This is the vertex form of a quadratic function. And a vertex is h comma k. The standard form looks like this, ax squared plus bx plus c. That's the standard form of a quadratic equation. So let's say if we have a function that looks like this y is equal to x minus 1 squared. Notice that h is the number that we see here. h is 1. Now, since there's no number here, k is 0. So the vertex is 1, comma 0. So this graph, it shifts one unit to the right. So that's a horizontal shift. And the vertex is at this point. Now, if you want to find the next point, here's a technique that you can use. You can use a table if you want, but you don't need to. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. Why am I telling you this? It turns out that from the vertex, if you travel 1 unit to the right, the next point will occur at a y value that's one unit higher than the vertex. So travel one unit to the right and up one, that's going to give you the next point. One unit to the left, up one, that will give you the point to the left of the vertex. Now, since 2 squared is 4, if you travel two units to the right, you can find the next point if you go up four units starting from the vertex. So the next point occurs at 3, comma 4. And if you travel two units to the left, towards negative 1, and if you, go at, if you go up 4 units, you'll get the next point, which is uh, negative 1, 4. So that's a quick way that you can graph it. Now, if you prefer to use the table, you can do that too. But if you do choose to use the table, center the table around the vertex. Choose two points to the right of the vertex and two points to the left of the vertex. So let's say if we plug in 2 into the equation. So 2 minus 1 is 1. 1 squared is 1. So we get the point 2, 1. If you plug in 0, it's going to be the same thing due to the symmetry around the vertex. Now, if you plug in 3 into the equation, 3 minus 1 squared is going to be 2 squared, which is 4. And negative 1 should have the same value. Because these two points are equally distant, they have the same y value. And negative 1 and 3 is equidistant from the vertex, so they share the same y value of 4 due to the symmetry around the vertex. Now, what is the axis of symmetry? And does this graph have a minimum value or a maximum value? So the axis of symmetry is simply the x-coordinate of the vertex. So therefore, it's x equals 1. Now, because it opens upward, 
this graph has a minimum value and that value is the y coordinate of the vertex so the minimum value is zero now once you have this information you could find the domain and the range the domain for any quadratic function is always going to be negative infinity to infinity the domain represents the allowed x values or the values of x that you can have in this function x could be anything it could be 5 0 negative 8 100 there's no restrictions on the value of x so the domain for a quadratic function will always be negative infinity to infinity. Now the range is going to vary. To write the range, what is the lowest y value that you see here? Looking at the values on the y-axis, the lowest y value is 0, and the highest is infinity, because it keeps going up towards infinity. So therefore, the range is from 0 to infinity. And since it includes 0, you need to use a bracket, add 0, instead of a parenthesis. For infinity, always use parentheses. So that's how you can write the domain and range for this particular function. Let's try another example. Let's grab this function, y is equal to negative x squared plus 4. So the number on the outside, or that's separate from x, that represents a vertical shift. It's going to shift up 4 units. So the vertex is going to be 0, comma 4. You can rewrite this function as x minus 0 squared plus 4. So because this is a 0, it doesn't shift to the left or to the right. So the vertex is 0 at the x value. But we do have a k value of 4. And so it shifts up 4 units from the origin. Now the negative sign in front of the x squared tells us that the graph reflects over the x-axis. So it's going to open in a downward direction. But it's going to start at 0, 4. And it's going to point downward. Now you can make a table at this point if you want. Just remember to center the table of values at the vertex. So since the x-coordinate of the vertex is 0, choose two points to the right and two points to the left. Now, since 1 squared is 1, if we travel 1 to the right, we need to go down 1 unit, which will take us to the point 1, 3. And 1 to the left, we also need to go down 1 unit from the vertex. Now, since 2 squared is 4, as we travel 2 units from the right or to the right of the vertex, we need to go down 4 units. So that will take us to the point 2, 0. And if we travel 2 units to the left, down 4, that will take us to the point negative 2, 0. Now, if you plug in the numbers that we have in the table into the equation, you should get the same answer. So negative 1 squared plus 4, that's negative 1 plus 4, which is 3. If we plug in negative 1, we'll get the same thing. Now, negative 2 squared plus 4, that's negative 4 plus 4, which is 0. If you plug in negative 2, you get the same thing. So we'll get the same points that we already have in the graph. Now, what are the x and y intercepts for this particular function? The x intercepts are the values of x where the graph touches the x axis. So 2, 0 and negative 2, 0 are the x-intercepts. The y-intercept is where it touches the y-axis, and that's 0, 4. So we already have them for this particular example. Now, does this function have a maximum value or a minimum value? Because there's a negative in front of the x-squared, it's going to open downward, and therefore it has a maximum value. The vertex is 0, 4. The maximum value is the y-coordinate of the vertex, which is 4. The axis of symmetry is the x coordinate of the vertex, which is 0. Now what about the domain and range of this function? So as we said before, the domain represents its all real numbers. x could be anything. However, there will be restriction on the range or the y values. Now what is the lowest y value you see and what's the highest? The highest y value is 4. The lowest is negative infinity. 
these arrows will keep going down towards negative infinity. So writing it from left to right or from low value to high value, the range is going to be negative infinity to 4, but it includes 4. So notice that the range always has the y coordinate of the vertex because that's going to be the minimum value or the maximum value. If it's the maximum value, the y coordinate will be on the right side. If it's a minimum value, the y coordinate will be on the left side. And then infinity will, will be on the other side. It's always one or the other way. It's one of those two ways. Let's try this one. y is equal to x plus 2 squared minus 1. So how can we graph this particular quadratic function? So notice that it's going to shift two units to the left and down one unit. So the vertex is going to be negative 2 comma negative 1. So h is negative 2 and k is negative 1. So remember to reverse this value but not this one. So the vertex is at negative 2, negative 1, which is somewhere in this region. So as we travel one unit to the right, we need to go up one since there's a positive in front of the x squared function. So the next point is going to be at negative 1, 0. If we travel one to the left from the vertex and up one, that will give us another point, negative 3, 0. So those are the x-intercepts, negative 3, 0 and negative 1, 0. Now as we travel 2 units to the right, we need to go up 4 units all the way to 3. 2 units to the left, up to 3 as well. So this is the y-intercept, which is 0, 3. To find the y-intercept, you can plug in 0 into x, and then you should get a y-value of 3. 2 squared is 4 minus 1 is 3. To find the x-intercept, replace y with 0 and solve for x. So let me show you. First let's make some space. Let's put this over here. So let's replace 0 or y with 0 and then we'll solve for x. So we need to add 1 to both sides. So 1 is equal to x plus 2 squared. And now let's take the square root of both sides. The square root of 1 will give you two numbers, plus or minus 1. The square root of x plus 2 squared is just going to be x plus 2. So you have two equations. x plus 2 is equal to positive 1, and x plus 2 is equal to negative 1. If you subtract 2, 1 minus 2 will give you an x-intercept of negative 1 which is this one here. And negative 1 minus 2 will give you an x-intercept of negative 3, which is the other one. So that's how you can find the x-intercept in vertex form. So now let's go ahead and graph the function. So we have a parabola that's going to open in the upward direction. So therefore, we have a minimum value. The minimum value is the y-coordinate of the vertex, so it's negative 1. The axis of symmetry is the equation x is equal to negative 2, the x-coordinate of the vertex. The domain is all real numbers. And what about the range? What do you think the range is going to be? So the range is going to have the y-coordinate of the vertex, negative 1. And since it's a minimum value, the lowest y-value is negative 1. The highest, notice that it goes up towards positive infinity. So that's the highest y-value. So the range is from negative 1 to infinity. Now let's try this one. Let's say that y is equal to negative 2 times x minus 1 squared plus 3. So feel free to pause the video 
and try this example if you want to. So what is the vertex? Let's start with that. Notice that it shifts one unit to the right and up three units. So the vertex is one comma three. H is one, K is three. So it's somewhere over here. Now we have a negative sign in front of the equation so we know it's going to open in a downward direction. Now how can we find the next point? Typically, what we did before is as we traveled one unit to the right from the vertex, we would go down one unit since we had the function y was equal to x squared. But now it's negative 2x squared. So if you plug in 1 into x, you should get negative 2 for y. So as you travel one unit to the right, you need to go down two units. You have to multiply it by 2. Instead of going down one unit, you need to go down two units. So that's going to take us to this point. And if we travel one to the left, we need to go down two units as well. So that will take us to the point 0, 1, which is the y-intercept. Now, if we travel two units to the right, typically we would go down by four units but we got to multiply that by 2, so we need to go down 8 units. So currently, the y value of the vertex is 3. So 3 minus 8 will take us to a y value of negative 5. So the next point is going to be 3, negative 5. And if we travel 2 to the left, it's going to be negative 1, negative 5. So the graph looks like this. Now we can't clearly see what the x-intercepts are. So let's solve it. Let's replace 0 for y and let's solve for x. So let's subtract 3 from both sides. So negative 3 is equal to negative 2 times x minus 1 squared. So let's divide both sides by negative 2. So the two negative signs will cancel and it's going to be 3 over 2 and that's equal to x minus 1 squared. So let's take the square root of both sides. So plus or minus root 3 over root 2, which if you rationalize it, that's going to be root 6 over 2. That's equal to x minus 1. So if we add 1 to both sides, we get two answers. It's 1 plus or minus root 6 over 2. So this point here is 1 plus root 6 over 2. And this other x-intercept is 1 minus root 6 over 2. Now, since the graph opens downward, we have a maximum value. And the max value is the y-coordinate, which is 3. And the axis of symmetry, which is this vertical line here, that's x equals 1. The domain is all row numbers. And what is the range? So notice that the lowest y value is negative infinity, but the highest is 3. So it's from negative infinity to 3. And that's all we could do for this particular quadratic function. Now, what if the function is in standard form? So let's say if we have the equation y is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 8. How would you grab this function? So it's positive x squared. We know it's going to open upward. Now, if you want to find the vertex, you want to use this equation. x is equal to negative b divided by 2a. So this equation is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So a is the number in front of x. Since we don't see a number, it's a 1 b is 2, c is negative 8. So let's find the x-coordinate of the vertex. So b is 2, a is 1, negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So now to find the y-coordinate, let's replace x with negative 1. So it's negative 1 squared 
plus 2 times negative 1 minus 8. Negative 1 squared is negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1. And 2 times negative 1, that's minus 2. So 1 minus 2 is negative 1, and negative 1 minus 8 is negative 9. So the x-coordinate of the vertex is negative 1. I mean, the y-coordinate is negative 9, so, but the vertex-coordinate is negative 1, negative 9. So now that we have that, let's find the x-intercepts. So let's replace y with 0, and let's solve for x. So notice that we have a trinomial where the leading coefficient is 1. So we need to factor it. We need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 8, but add to the middle term 2. So this is going to be 4 and negative 2. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, but 4 plus negative 2 is 2. So to factor it, it's going to be x plus 4 times x minus 2. Now to solve for x, we need to set each factor equal to 0. So for the first one, let's subtract 4 from both sides. So x is equal to negative 4. And for the next one, let's add 2 to both sides. So x is equal to positive 2. So those are the two x-intercepts. Negative 4, 0. And 2, 0. Now let's find a y-intercept. So let's plug in 0 into the equation. So we've got to replace 0 with x. So 0 squared plus 2 times 0 minus 8 is simply negative 8. So the y-intercept is 0, negative 8. So at this point, let's organize the data that we have in a table. And let's center it based on the vertex, which is negative 1, negative 9. So the y-intercept is very close to the vertex, is 0, negative 8. So if it's, let me put it over here. So since the y-intercept is one unit to the right of the vertex, one unit to the left must also share the same y-value of negative 8. Now the x-intercepts are negative 4, 0, and 2, 0. Notice that the x-coordinate of the vertex is the average of the x-intercepts. If you average 2 and negative 4, if you add them up and divide by 2, this will give you the x-coordinate of the vertex, which is negative 1. So now we have enough points to make a graph out of this equation. Negative 9 is all the way at the bottom. So let's plot the vertex first, which is negative 1, negative 9. And then the y-intercept, which is 0, negative 8. And we have another point at negative 2, negative 8. And then the x-intercept at 2, 0, and negative 4, 0. So the graph is going to look something like... Okay, that side was messed up. Let's do that again. It's going to look something like that. So we can see that the axis of symmetry is the x-coordinate of the vertex. So that's at x equals negative 1. And it represents this line. We have a minimum value. And a minimum value is the y-coordinate of the vertex. So it's negative 9. The domain, as always, is all real numbers. And the range, notice that the lowest y-value is negative 9, and the highest is infinity. So the range is from negative 9 to infinity. And so that is it for this particular example. Let's try one more example like that last problem. Go ahead and try this one. So find the vertex, the x-intercepts, the y-intercepts, and then go ahead and graph it. So let's start with the x-intercepts. What two numbers multiply to negative 3 but add to 2? This is going to be positive 3 and negative 1. 
So it's going to be x plus 3 times x minus 1. So the intercepts are negative 3 and 1. So as an ordered pair, we can write the x-intercepts as negative 3 comma 0 and 1 comma 0. Now what is the midpoint between negative 3 and 1? If we add these two numbers and divide by 2, if we average them, what is the midpoint? So negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2, and negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So this will give us the x-coordinate of the vertex. Now to prove it, you can use the equation x is equal to negative b divided by 2a. So b is the number in front of x, which is 2, and a is the number in front of the x squared. If you don't see anything, it's a 1. Negative 2 divided by 2 is indeed negative 1. So now let's find the y-coordinate of the vertex. So let's plug in negative 1 into the equation. So negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 3. This is 1 minus 2 minus 3. So that's 1 minus 5, which is negative 4. Now there's another way in which you could find the coordinates of the vertex. You can use the complete the square method and convert the equation from standard form back into vertex form. So let's separate the first two terms from the last term. So to complete the square, we need to find the perfect square that will complete this trinomial. And that number is going to be half of this number that you see here in front of x, and then square it. So half of 2 is 1, so we need to add 1 squared. Now, for the right side to be equal, if we add 1 squared to the right side, we must also take away 1 squared from the right side, so that we haven't changed the value of the right side. So we have x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus 3 minus 1, or minus 4. So notice that 1 minus 4 still equals to the original value of negative 3. Now how can we factor x squared plus 2x plus 1? Two numbers that multiply to 1 but add to 2 are 1 and 1. So it's going to be x plus 1 times x plus 1, which we can simply write it as x plus 1 squared minus 4. So that is the equation in vertex form. And notice that you can get the vertex from it, which is negative 1, negative 4. And we have that here. So that's another way you can find the vertex. Next, let's find the y-intercept. If we replace x with 0, we could see that it's going to be negative 3. So we have the point 0, negative 3. So now we can organize everything into a table. And so let's start with the vertex, which is negative 1, negative 4. The y-intercept is one unit away from the vertex. It's to the right of it. So one unit to the left must also have a y value of negative 3. Now the x-intercepts are 1, 0 and negative 3, 0. So as you can see, these two are the same and these two are the same. It makes it a lot easier if you center it around the vertex. It's very easy to find the missing points. So now we can make the graph. Now let's start with the vertex, which is negative 1, negative 4. And then we have the point 0, negative 3, and negative 2, negative 3. And then after that, we have 1, 0, and negative 4, 0. So the graph looks something like this. You see that it has a minimum value at negative 4. The axis of symmetry is x equals negative 1, 
the domain is all row numbers, and the range is from negative 4 to infinity. So that's it for this particular function. Now let's try this word problem. A ball is thrown upward at a speed of 16 meters per second from a cliff that is 32 meters high. Now we're given the height function. This function tells us the height at any time t. How long does it take the ball to reach its maximum height? So let's say if it's at a cliff, here's the ground level, and here's the ball. So it's thrown upward, it reaches its max height, and then it falls down. Now, if we were to plot the height equation, which if we rearrange it, it's negative 4.9t squared plus 16t plus 32. We can see that the y-intercept is 32, so that's basically the height of the cliff. It goes up, and then it falls back down. This graph is similar to negative x squared, which is a downward parabola. So to find the height, we need to find the y-coordinate of the vertex. And to find the time it takes to reach the height, that's the x-coordinate of the vertex. x is associated with t, y is associated with h. So let's go ahead and do that. So t is equal to negative b over 2a. So b is the number in front of t, which is 16 and a is the number in front of t squared, which is negative 4.9. 2 times negative 4.9 is negative 9.8. The two negative signs will cancel, so t is going to be positive, and 16 divided by 9.8 will give us a t value of 1.63. So this is the time it takes to reach the maximum height. It's 1.633. Now, for part B, we need to find the maximum height. So we have to plug in the t value into the equation. We need to see what the height is when the time is 1.633 squared times negative 4.9 that's about negative 13.067 and then 16 times 1.633 that's 26.128 and let's add 32 to it So the maximum height occurs at positive 45.061. So that's the answer to part B. So if we consider the graph again, we know it starts at a height of 32. It goes up and then it goes back down. So at the maximum height, the y value is 45.06. And the time it takes to get there is 1.633. So at this point, the ball is at its maximum. Now for part C, we want to find out how long it's going to take for it to hit the ground. So what is the time value when it's at ground level? So we get to find, we need to find the time at that point where the y value is 0. So what we're going to do is we're going to replace h with 0 and solve for t. So 0 is equal to negative 4.9 t squared plus 16t plus 32. So basically we're finding the x-intercept. But it's going to be very difficult to factor this expression. So if you can't factor it, 
the best thing to do is to use the quadratic equation. So t is equal to negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So b is 16, b squared or 16 squared, that's 256 minus 4 times a, which is negative 4.9, times c, which is positive 32, divided by 2a, or 2 times negative 4.9. Negative 4 times negative 4.9 times 32, that's 627.2. And if you add 256 to that, that's 883.2. If you take the square root, you get 29.72. So what we now have is it's negative 16 plus or minus 29.72, which is equal to this whole thing inside the radical including the radical, divided by negative 9.8. So let's make some space. So now we have two possible answers. The first one is negative 16 plus 29.72 divided by negative 9.8. Negative 16 plus 29.72, that's positive 13.72. If we divide it by negative 9.8, that will give us a negative time value, which is not what we're looking for. Now, if we try negative 16 minus 29.72 divided by negative 9.8, this will give us a positive value, which is going to be positive 4.67. So now let's make sense of the information that we have here. So if we make a graph, we know the initial height is 32. The max height is 45.06. The time it takes to reach the maximum height, 1.633. But the time it takes to hit the ground, it's going to be 4.67. So if that represents this answer, what is the other answer? Now notice that if you extend the graph this way, it's also going to touch the x-axis at negative 1.4. But for a real-life situation, time won't be negative. So the answer for part C, the time that it takes to hit the ground is 4.67 seconds. Now let's talk about how to write the equation if you're given the graph. So let's say this is the graph, and it looks something like this. And let's say you're given two points. You know the vertex, which is 1, negative 5, and you also know the y-intercept, 0, negative 4. If you have two points, you can find the equation. So if you have the vertex, it's easier if you use the vertex form of the equation, which is a x minus h squared plus k. So h is 1, k is negative 5. So let's plug it in. So this is going to be a times x minus, and now let's insert the value of h, which is 1, squared plus k, which is negative 5. So we have the formula a x minus 1 squared minus 5. Now the only thing that we need is to find the value of a. Once we do that, then we have the equation in vertex form. So that's where the second point comes in. Replace y with negative 4 and x with 0, since x is 0, y is negative 4, and solve for a. So 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is just 1. So if we add 5 to both sides, negative 4 plus 5 is 1. So in this case, a is 1. So now at this point, to write the equation, simply replace a with what it is. So the equation is x minus 1 squared minus 5 in vertex form. And notice that since the graph opens upward, it's positive x squared. 
Now sometimes you may want the answer in standard form. To convert it from vertex form to standard form, you need to FOIL x minus 1 squared. x minus 1 squared is the same as x minus 1 times x minus 1. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 1, that's negative x. Negative 1 times x, that's also negative x. And negative 1 times 1 is plus 1 minus the 5. So x minus x is 2x. 1 minus 5 is negative 4. So in standard form, it's x squared minus 2x minus 4. So that's how you can write the equation in vertex form and in standard form if you're given the vertex and a point. It could be a y-intercept, the x-intercept, whatever that other point is. Plug in x and y and solve for a. Let's try one more example. So let's say if you're given the x-intercepts, which are 1 and 5, and also you know the y-intercept, which is negative 10. What can you do to write the equation of this graph? Now we don't have the coordinates of the vertex, but we do know that the, the x-coordinate is 3. It's the midpoint between the two x-intercepts, but we don't know the y-value, so we can't really use that. So if you have the x-intercepts, 1, 0, and 5, 0. Here's what you can do. You can write x minus 1 times x minus 5 in its factored form. Because once you factor it, these will be the x-intercepts. Now you still need another point to find the value of a, and that's where the y-intercept comes. The y-intercept is 0, negative 10. So let's replace y with negative 10, and let's replace x with 0. This will allow us to solve for a. So 0 minus 1 is negative 1. 0 minus 5 is negative 5. And negative 1 times negative 5 is positive 5. So if we divide both sides by 5, we can see that a is equal to negative 2. So therefore, the equation in factored form is y is equal to negative 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 5. Now, to put it in standard form, we need to FOIL. x times x is x squared. x times negative 5, that's negative 5x. Negative 1 times x, negative x. And negative 1 times negative 5, plus 5. And we still have a negative 2 on the outside. So let's combine like terms. Negative 5x minus x, that's negative 6x. Now the next thing that we need to do is distribute the negative 2. So it's going to be negative 2x squared plus 12x minus 10. So that is the equation in standard form. Now how can we write the equation in vertex form? What you could do at this point is you can complete the square. So to complete the square, let's focus on the first two terms. Let's factor out the GCF, which is, well, not the GCF, but let's take out the negative 2. Negative 2x squared divided by negative 2 is x squared. And positive 12x divided by negative 2 is negative 6x. And then we're going to leave a space, and here's a negative 10. So to complete the square, we need a number to add here such that when we factor this trinomial, it's going to be a perfect square trinomial. How can we do that? So we need to find half of this number. Half of negative 6 is negative 3, but make it positive. So it's going to be positive 3 and then squared. Now positive 3 squared is 9. Now we have to incorporate the negative 2 which is negative 18 if you distribute the negative 2 to the 9. So at this point, we added negative 18 to the right side of the equation. Now, so that the equation is balanced, we can either add negative 18 to the left side 
or positive 18 to the right side. So if you add negative 18 and positive 18 to the right side, the value of the right side is the same. It remains zero. And that's why this technique works. So now here's a shortcut way to factor this perfect square trinomial. It's going to be this letter x and then this sign, so minus, and then what you see here, 3 squared. That's how you can factor it the easy way. Now, if you're unsure why that works, let's work it out. 3 squared is 3 times 3, that's 9. Negative 10 plus 18, that's positive 8. So let's find two numbers that multiply to 9, but that add to the middle term, negative 6. So what are those two numbers? Negative 3 times negative 3 multiplies to negative, I mean, to positive 9. And negative 3 plus negative 3 adds to negative 6. So it's going to be x minus 3 times x minus 3, which we could simply write as x minus 3 squared. So the shortcut technique does work. It'll save you a lot of time. So this is the equation in vertex form. So you can always use the completing the square method to convert it from standard form to vertex form. So that is it for this video. Now you've uh, mastered quadratic functions, you know how to find the domain range, you know how to find the x and y intercepts, axis of symmetry, maximum and minimum values, and you also know how to solve word problems associated with it. So thanks for watching and have a great day.